Hello friends and family and welcome to the Tuesday, July 28th edition of the Crippling Anxiety Meditation Fireside Chat. For those of you who are friends of friends, uh, just a quick reminder that this is not meditation instruction and I am not a meditation teacher. This is just a conversation. Uh, and that's particularly relevant today because I wanted to talk about a video that I saw which was actually meditation instruction. Uh, it was uh, a brief um, anapan meditation instruction, meditation on the breath. And I was surprised to see that it involved quite a lot of imagination. Uh, imagining um, the breath moving through the nostrils and into the uh, sinus cavity and um, this area inside the head um, and the airiness inside of there. Um, I don't think that there is necessarily any harm in beginning this way, but I would encourage you to always think of uh, external tools as being temporary um, and that you're looking to get to a point where you can, as I said yesterday, meditate entirely on your own. So you don't necessarily need some audio and you don't need an app of any sort. Um, that's, that's good to be able to meditate on your own. But secondarily, not to artificially construct anything in your meditation that your meditation can be entirely on that which you know to be true and real um, and this isn't easy and it certainly takes uh, some uh, inertia <laughs> <laughs> and if to build up that inertia, it helps to imagine the air inside uh, the nasal cavity, um, that's okay. But you can use um, that to find the actual sensation of the air coming inside the nose and the feeling of it inside the nasal passages. And you can actually meditate on that instead. And you can get away from imaginary meditations uh, fairly early on in your meditation practice. And I would encourage you to do so. So if you're thinking about this idea of coming outside in, then the furthest outside, well, the, the furthest outside is not meditating at all. And we'll talk about that tomorrow. But once you begin meditating, to meditate with tools, external tools, is uh, far outside and then to meditate with imaginary tools is um, is closer but it's still outside it's not real it's not what is actually happening and you can meditate entirely on the actual occurrence um, in your body on the surface of your body um, and this is ultimately going to be the most beneficial uh, meditation um, that you can do, in my opinion. And in um, many cases, it's important to meditate this way ultimately, because if you find yourself in a higher state of meditation, even temporarily, if that higher state of meditation is brought about by something artificial or something you have constructed, um, that is a slightly dangerous place to be in because you're not sure that you can necessarily trust that thing. If I've uh, constructed a mantra, if I've constructed a sound or an image, then that is not true. That's not what is uh, the bare reality. And if you're meditating on the bare reality, whatever it is, um, however difficult it might be, at least you know that it is true and you can rely on that, that this is the truth. Um, so I encourage you to think about your meditation tools in this way. Uh, keep coming back to thinking of them, of them in this way, but um, at no point should you feel that any meditation tool is 
not worth exploring, especially initially in your meditation practice. Um, give them a try, find out what works for you, and then see if you can work through these uh, different external layers. I hope you are taking good care of yourself and your family and your friends and your friends of friends. I will talk to you tomorrow about not meditation. Goodbye.